So hello everyone. I'm glad to be able to represent the Interact PSR funded project comms in this networking village event. My name is Kerli Gesima and I'm from Stockholm Environment Institute, which is one of the partner countries of the comms project. And today I will give you an overview of one of the tasks that we here in SEO Tallinn under this project we're leading and that fall under work package number four of this project. However, before I jump into work package four, um, I would like to give you a quick overview of what this overall comms project is about. So the main aim of the comms project is advancing the energy auditing, the quality and policy dialogue for mitigation and adaptation, synergies in housing renovations and service sector. Comms is a two year project that already started last year in 2019 and the lead partner of this project is Tartu Regional Energy Agency and other partner organizations are from various other BSR countries such as from Sweden, Latvia, Poland, Germany, Russia and Estonia where I am from Messia Italian Center is from. So the task under work package four that we in SCI Italian were leading was task 4.1. And the overall goal of this task was to evaluate uh, the climate adaptation and mitigation synergies, both in the um, energy efficiency BSR projects, but also uh, among the different building projects that were selected from the comms project, project partner countries. Um, the methodology that was chosen for this research was that we developed quite an extensive questionnaire that was distributed among the uh, different key stakeholders that were part of the uh, selected cases that were evaluated for this study. Um, it's also important to understand the what we, what we mean by synergies um, of climate change mitigation and adaptation measures. So by synergies, we mean those climate measures that help to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, but at the same time help to adapt to the effects of climate change. And uh, the measures that have synergies can either be adaptation measures that have an impact on mitigation or vice versa, so the mitigation measures that have an impact on adaptation. Uh, before I go into the discussing the main uh, results, it's also important to understand some of the research limitations. So um, the small size of the sample uh, places restrictions on making generalizations. So as the responses to the survey may increase, uh, the conclusions of this uh, research may change as well to some extent. Um, also, the choices of the questionnaires are obviously based on the respondents' own assessment. So, for instance, in terms of the new built and renovated building projects, the levels of implementation of measures is based on the respondents' assessment. And also, here, the differences in national standards play a role. <clears throat> so with this slide, um, I can give you an, it gives you an overview of the different selected cases. So we first of all selected um, six PSR uh, projects that were related to the topic of energy efficiency, such as PIA app, effect for buildings, Green Remark, Low Damp, Lucia, Community. And we also selected um, two PSR projects that were related to the topic of adaptation, such as Cascade and Tigi Eco. Um, we also selected uh, a number of building projects, um, so in total of 17. And from the building side, each partner country had the requirement to fill in the questionnaire for at least one renovated building project and one newly built building. And both buildings had to be good examples that could uh, show climate adaptation aspects in their countries so that the maximum level of possible adaptation could be investigated. Uh, so we first of all give the assessment of the BSR energy efficiency projects. And on the first graph of this slide, you can see how the different adaptation aspects in different projects 
uh, have been considered in the various project outputs. Uh, so the top three project outputs that do consider the adaptation aspects are the pilot projects, districts and sites, stakeholder and citizen involvement, and renewable energy measures. And the project outputs that consider the, the adaptation aspects the least is the landscaping and ecosystem services, various tools that are developed under those different projects, and also projects, objectives, and names. Um, on the second graph of this slide, you can see the consideration of different climate impacts in energy efficiency BSR projects. And here, as a result, you can see that one of the most popular uh, climate impact to consider is temperature, and the least considered impact is the flood and sea level rise. So what, are, what were the main takeaways uh, that came out of the assessment of the BSR, energy efficiency BSR project, is that uh, the project managers of those energy efficiency projects highlighted that the adaptation remained secondary within the project due to specific objectives stated by the program and application, whereas the project managers of the adaptation projects highlighted that actually for them, the mitigation topic remains secondary. So all in all, there was no specific communication or policy support on mitigation and adaptation synergies to the target groups, nor designated deliverables and outputs. So, but however, in the cases where the adaptation was discussed was in the framework of wider policy framework in the macro approach and the it was rather a coincidence and a practical reasoning during implementation in a ad hoc manner and not directly aiming for adaptation or a programmed and planned integrity of mitigation and adaptation. So now we are going to the assessment of the building project and this slide gives you an overview of the selected uh, building project cases. Um, here of it's first of all important to explain what these different colors mean on all of those pie charts. So the blue area marks the different climate measures that are related to the water, heating, ventilation, cooling and so on. The brown area marks different climate measures that are related to site landscaping and management and the largest group of measures belongs to energy supply and building envelope. Um, related uh, topics. Um, the blue line in, in the circle um, describes the implementation of different measures and the closer the blue line is to the center of the circle it means that the measures were implemented um, to the minimum standards and as more further the blue line is from the center, it means that the measures were implemented above the minimum standards. And I think looking at those graphs, one of the main takeaways is that uh, it looks quite obvious that uh, in terms of the new buildings, the climate measures were uh, mostly considered to the larger extent compared to the renovated buildings. However, it's not necessarily a rule because looking at some of the countries such as Germany and Latvia, one can actually say that the pictures between um, the implementation of measures among new and renovated buildings actually looks quite similar. And with the next slides, uh, we will give you uh, some of the reasonings behind those graphs. Um, now we are looking actually more in detail to the analyzed measures. In total, we had 51 measure, climate measures that we uh, distributed between two different groups. So the first group of measures uh, consists of measures that are related to energy and building envelope. And uh, on this slide, you can see two, two graphs. One is for new buildings and the second one is for renovated buildings 
And the light green color on these graphs um, describe the measures that are implemented to the minimum standard. So it's mostly the measures that apply to the minimum national requirements in different countries. And the dark green color in those graphs represents measures that are implemented above that minimum standards. Also, the different measures have been distributed among um, adaptation and mitigation. And also, um, these graphs give an overview of the difference um, soon energies among those measures. So you can make it between adaptation measures that have implications on uh, mitigation and vice versa. Um, so, I mean, what are the main um, highlights of those graphs is that it's quite obvious that while looking at the graph, you can see that uh, in terms of the new buildings, uh, most of the measures were um, implemented above minimum standards compared to the renovated buildings. Um, and the measures that have synergies between mitigation and adaptation are mostly from the group of uh, mitigation measures. So there were more mitigation measures considered uh, all in all compared to the adaptation measures. And uh, in most cases, those mitigation measures that had implications on adaptation were the, the measures that are related to the energy efficiency improvements, such as better air density, energy efficient heating systems, and um, automated indoor climates. Um, in the case of new buildings, there are also more innovative and less obvious measures too, such as, for instance, glazing technologies and um, including solar panels, for instance. And in the case of renovated buildings, um, there were some individual adaptation measures that were implemented more strongly, such as elements fastened, more firmly to buildings and moisture proof building materials. In the case of new buildings, also more innovative measures were included, such as uh, green roofs and passive solar heating, um, and so on. In the next slide, uh, the picture is actually quite similar. The difference is that here we analyzed uh, different measures that did not belong to the uh, energy and building envelope related measures, but were measures that were um, related to the uh, selection of location, um, heating, um, ventilation and cooling systems, landscaping, also project management related measures and so on. And and the picture is actually quite similar to the previous slide because you can also see that um, the measures implemented above minimum standards were largely um, done for new buildings rather than renovated buildings. Also, uh, similarly to the previous slide, there, there is more, uh, rather more mitigation measures considered, especially under the renovated buildings. Also, in terms of the sun energies, um, there were more measures that have more mitigation measures that have impacts on adaptation than vice versa. Uh, and the most popular ones out of these were heat recovery ventilation and smart meters. Um, also, auto mitigation, auto mitigation measures are generally implemented more and to a stricter standards. In the case of new buildings in particular, there is also considerable implementation of adaptation measures. In the case of renovated buildings, uh, actually too, there are some individual adaptation measures that were implemented more strongly, such as landscaping, landscaping planning and water permeable coatings for the pavements. Uh, for new buildings, uh, the availability of efficient water systems, site selection, sustainable wor storm water systems, and smart meter, smarter use of rainwater was also uh, important. So, 
what are the overall conclusions of this entire research? Um, so we first of all concluded that um, the topics of mitigation and adaptation were rather delivered as two separate policy areas, not as synergies. And uh, in the cases where um, adaptation or the synergies were implemented was rather in an ad hoc manner. However, uh, the cases where a few adaptation measures um, there are some of them that are actually enforced by law. For instance, um, it, it is mainly the um, measures that consider floodings. Um, but uh, most of the adaptation measures um, rather depend, their, I mean, their implementation rather depend more on the willingness or knowledge of uh, different developers or architects um, or so on. And uh, most adaptation measures that were used uh, were like automated indoor climate of the buildings, maintenance of plant cover and removal of dangerous trees near the buildings, permanent roads and car parks, stronger attachment of elements fastened to buildings such as rain cutters, antennas and lights. Um, some of the examples of mitigation and adaptation uh, synergies um, can also be concluded, but it's also important to understand that and remember that these synergies are not always positive. So um, like one of the measures that quite nicely represents uh, the synergies in a positive way is green roofs because um, they can absorb CO2 but at the same time, um, they can also help to cope with uh, future more excessive rainfalls, for instance. Um, so other measures um, that can be given a sample of synergies is like higher foundations, also construction materials that can cope with excessive moisture. I mean, they are good measures that can help to adapt with the climate change effects, but at the same time, um, we have to be um, sure, I mean, we have to understand that uh, there might be higher requirements of uh, building materials that may impact higher CO2 footprints of uh, materials. Um, also, one of the examples is, in terms of the sun energies, is installation of new and efficient air conditioning. Uh, it is actually a positive example because if um, the air conditioning is energy efficient um, and might be, you know, uh, based on uh, uh, renewable energy, then it can help to cope with uh, future rising temperatures. But at the same time, it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, raise the CO2 emissions. So some of the key recommendations that we made uh, in the study is that uh, in the planning of the different climate measures, um, the synergies, we have to understand the synergies, uh, especially the negative effects, and we should consider those. And I mean, one of the ways to overcome the negative effects is to compensate by a combination of uh, measures if possible. Um, also, the, the project experts uh, concluded that the existing norms for building should be uh, updated based on the uh, differences that we can actually already see happening um, with our temperatures and so on. Um, I mean, there are some countries that actually have quite a nice handbooks and guidelines um, that help to consider the adaptation measures. Um, such handbooks could be found from UK and Sweden, for instance. And I think it's important for the other countries as well to develop such guidelines that help the engineers and architects. Um, and perhaps um, these could help to draw out some, some actually more technical requirements in the future, uh, also for buildings that need renovation. 
And all in all, we, we conclude the study um, by recommending that the programming EU climate policy should challenge more specialized approach attempting to integrate the mitigation and adaptation policies as a more horizontal value merit. So I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation and um, there is actually a very extensive, very, very extensive report that we put together for this study and that is available on the Comms Project website for you to download. Um, so I hope you enjoyed and if you have more further questions, then feel free to write either to me or my colleague Pirat Kultna and you can see the email addresses on on this uh, last slide. Thank you very much. Bye.